In this video, we're going to show you how to set up and connect the M Audio M Track Solo audio interface with the Shure SM7B dynamic microphones. A lot of people have questions about compatibility between these two devices. Does the M Audio M Track Solo have enough power to power the infamously hard to power Shure SM7B dynamic microphone? If they are compatible, how do you set it up? What accessories do you need? What cables or outboard equipment do we recommend in order to make these to work together, or maybe you just want to hear them together so you can make a decision as to whether or not you're happy with the quality or the sound or something like that of the Shure SM7B to use it with your M Audio M Track Solo. We're going to cover all those questions in this video. We're going to walk through how I would set everything up with a home recording on your computer. Now, if you are looking for pricing or specs for anything that you see in this video, if you want to know what cables we use or other equipment that we discuss in this video, we do have links down in the description below from a variety of online retailers to make sure that you are getting the best price possible. So if you are looking to buy anything here, you can make sure that you're getting a competitive price or finding it where it is in stock if you're trying to locate something or something like that. For the purposes of this video, the M-Track M-Audio Solo is already connected to the computer through USB, but we're going to walk through how to set it up in the software once we get the microphone connected to the audio interface. The first thing that we're going to do though before we connect anything to anything is we want to talk about mic positioning with the Shure SM7B. The Shure SM7B is a notoriously quiet microphone. This means that you do need to be really close to it in order to get a quality recording. If you're too far back from the Shure SM7B, you're going to notice that you have to turn up the gain way too much. This thing is already hard to power, so you might be asking your preamp to do more work than it can even accomplish. So having proper mic positioning will get you set up straight away. You do want to be about a fist away from this microphone. Ideally, you don't want to be speaking right into the microphone. You want the microphone just slightly off to the side. You want to be speaking past it. It does have pretty good plosive protection. When you say P and B sounds, some microphones have a tendency to blow out. The Shure SM7B, that can happen as well. It's less common, but by putting the microphone just slightly off axis, it does protect a little bit more against that. You can, of course, use a boom arm with this microphone. We do have some recommendations down in the description below, but for the purposes of this video, we're just using a table stand. The upside of the table stand is that you can see everything I'm doing. The downside is that some taps and clicks and bumps have a tendency to come through the stand into the microphone. The Shure SM7B does have a pretty good internal shock mounting, but it is still prone to getting tips and clicks and that type of thing through a stand like this. So a boom arm would be a little bit more optimum for a long-term solution for you. Now, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the M-Audio M-Track Solo, make sure everything is turned down. We're gonna make sure that the phantom power is turned off for now. The Shure SM7B is a dynamic microphone. Phantom power does not benefit this microphone in any way unless you're using a piece of outboard equipment, which we will test later and I will describe later. Having phantom power on with this microphone will not improve the sound. In fact, it actually does risk damaging the microphone. It's like a thousand to one shot. I've accidentally left it on hundreds of times and never damaged this microphone, but it is best practice to leave phantom power turned off and turn all the volumes down when you are connecting equipment. Now this is the XLR microphone, of course, so we're going to use the XLR male to female cable here, and we're going to connect it. Connect the microphone, and then we're going to connect this to the XLR input on the M-Audio M-Track Solo. Next, we can look over at the computer here. I have Logic Pro open. This is the program I use for most of my recording. I have the USB audio codec. That is what the M audio comes in as. And I'm going to choose that. When it loads up here, it's going to ask what track I want. I want track one or input one on the M audio M track solo because that's the XLR input on this device. And I'm going to hit create. Then I'm going to arm the track here. Check, check, one, two. So you can see right now that we're not, we're getting minus 57 or something like that. We're getting barely any level at all. And that's because we have not turned up the preamp at all. 
The job of the preamp on the M Audio M Track Solo is the same as every other preamp. You're taking this really tiny microphone level signal. On the Shure SM7B, it's even tinier because it is a very, very quiet microphone. And you're trying to amplify it to a line level signal that's more appropriate for a computer. So we're going to turn this up here. Now you'll notice here I'm at 6 out of 10. We're still coming in. I watch this peak number. This is where I'm peaking with the microphone. And I'm trying to get this number between minus 12 dB and minus 18 dB. You can see right now I'm at minus 34. So I'm going to keep turning it up. So you'll see right here I'm at minus 27. I'm still not where I need to be. In my, I'm at 9 out of 10. So right off the bat, I don't like pushing preamps past 9 out of 10. That's when you really get a lot of hiss and that type of thing out of the preamp. And you can see we're still about 10 dB away from where I want to be on the computer side. So I do not think that this audio interface has enough power by itself. When you look at the spec sheet of the M Audio M Track Solo, it says that it has 54 dB of gain. Generally, if I'm powering the Shure SM7B, I want to see a preamp with 64 dB of gain. So this is about 10 short, but there is a solution here. Before I show you the solution, I'm going to show you one issue that I have with the M Audio M Track Solo. And I have heard from other people watching my videos that they have the same issue. So I think it is consistent across all devices. I don't think it's just a one off of the device that I have. When you turn this up, somewhere between nine and a half and 10, if we're watching the meter right now, you can see I'm peaking at minus 21. As you turn it up here, boom, then it snaps at about nine and a half and suddenly it goes up like 15 dB. So they have some sort of boost or it's an issue or something. Either way, maybe it's like a, if you turn it up all the way, it'll just give you all the power it has to try power a hard to power microphone. Either way, I find it very hard to control. We're talking like fractions of a millimeter on this knob as to when it's at minus 20 dB and when it's at zero dB. So I would never rely on this. You might be looking at this saying, hey, look, it'll give me all the gain that I need for the Shure SM7B. But it's, it's a hair trigger here, so I would never count on this. Maybe on a one-off if you're really in a stuck situation. But if you're wanting this microphone for the long term, I'm going to show you what I would do. I'm going to turn this all the way down. So you can use an inline preamp. Basically what an inline preamp, the cloud lifter is one of many. There are many, many other types and the varying prices. The cloud lifter is one of the more expensive ones, but it was one of the first ones to the scene. What this will do is this will trade phantom power for reducing the gain somewhere around 20 dB. So this will provide clean-ish gain. They claim it's noise-free for the Shure SM7B in exchange for phantom power. We did talk about how the dynamic microphone doesn't typically require phantom power. So this is an extra tool that we have. We can connect this in line between the microphone and the audio interface, turn on phantom power to power this device, and that will reduce the amount of gain that we need to give this microphone. So let's give it a try. So we're going to unplug the XLR cable from the Shure SM7B. We're going to connect it to the cloud lifter. Now the cloud lifter has XLR on both sides. We can continue just using standard XLR cables. Again, if you are looking for a recommendation, we have some links down in the description below. So you can see here, I'll walk through it in a sec. We're just going to connect this to the audio interface. So we have this white cable coming from the microphone to the cloud lifter. Then we have a purple cable coming from the cloud lifter to the audio interface. So we have put this in line to the audio interface. Now, right now, this won't do anything for us until we turn on phantom power. So I'm going to turn that on here. You can see this light came on. So I turned on phantom power there. So now we're going to retry using the preamp on the M audio to see how much gain that we can get now that we have the cloud lifter installed in line. So we're going to increase the gain here. We're going to look over at my peak meter. I'm going to turn it all the way up to about six and a half or six and three quarter out of seven. And you can see right there that I've achieved my goal. I'm at, I peaked at minus 17.4, minus 15. And now you can hear the Shure SM7B. I'm going to go quiet for a second just so you can hear that there's no hiss or background noise. It sounds relatively clean, even if you're using headphones. So this is a really good solution for getting the proper power 
to the Shure SM7B by using an inline preamp like the Cloud Lifter. So if I was using the Shure SM7B with this audio interface, you do need some type of inline preamp. The 54 dB that come with the M-Audio M-Track Solo is not sufficient. You do need that extra 20 or so dB coming from an inline preamp. Now, do I recommend this solution? I would say if you're buying a microphone like this, that you're better off looking for an audio interface with 62 to 64 or more dB of clean gain. There are a lot of new devices coming out that have 75 dB of gain to power the Shure SM7B without any outboard equipment. When you look at the cost of this microphone and then you, the fact that you need to buy outboard equipment to make the M audio work, I think it does justify you getting rid of both of these and buying a more appropriate audio interface. And I think you'll be happier with it. You'll get more channels, you'll get more inputs, you'll get a whole bunch of different upgrades when you jump into that higher price range that you're almost at by the time that you buy a cloud lifter and the extra XLR cables and things like that in order to make this work. So my answer to this question is yes, you can make all of this work with an inline preamp. No, I don't recommend it. I think if you're getting the M-Audio M-Track Solo, you're better off using condenser microphones that are easier to power, the AT2020, the Rode NT1, something like that. A lot of offerings from Neat are pretty good and on budget as well. But if you know that you're wanting the Shure SM7B for the long run, I wouldn't say that this is your best choice for an audio interface. Yes, there is an upgrade path here to make it work, but no, I don't think it's the best use of your money. I think you're, there are better options. We're going to link some options down in the description below to help you find some other comparable items that I think will be a better value for you if you are wanting to use the Shure SM7B. I hope this video has been helpful. If you do have any questions about anything that we've done here, again, if you are looking for pricing or specs, we have links down in the description below. Please leave a comment down in the description below. And if you want to see videos like this in the future, please like and subscribe. Thank you for watching.